we're going to try and revisit everything we have explored in the previous three sessions, be a little bit more disciplined, so we get a better sense of how sounds can be combined with particular body parts and particular kinds of movement. So sonification is this process of turning some kind of data into sound. So the data is being generated live by the dancers and I've worked with various bits of data, most of which has been fairly fixed. This is a much more fluid project. It's a case of working out what sounds are going to work best with those movements and how that data is going to translate best into the sound materials. So I put sounds together to accommodate uh, a number of situations, working in different contexts with large movements, with shorter movements. I also try to put together a set of sounds that are quite diverse. We're moving from an experience of this system as movers to how we can actually use the system as teachers towards its application with a group of people. If you're looking at articulation, you want one of these kind of sounds. If you're looking at that sense of weight Weightless. shifting, transference and grounding, then that kind of sound. But since, since you and the challenge was to get sounds that would allow enough variation that would encourage movement. That's what was I was aiming for, and it was interesting and tricky at the same time. Yeah. It's interesting seeing which ones need the mapping to be more sensitive to explore the kind of nuances of the sound, and then which ones can be more general, a sort of texture rather than specific things within the sound. Movement sonification provides a really good partner. It really contains the exploration, the movement, because it constantly gives you something back. There is always a new sound you may find in the sample there, or if you do the movement differently. Uh, and I think this is great for generating material. There is a certain unpredictability with systems like this, which come from the architecture of the system and working with real people, who are pretty unpredictable. Um, and, and, and my sound, so I guess there is a lot more there if one is open to exploration. It encouraged different choices and greater exploration before I then found the movement I wanted to use. So I think for people who often struggle to create their own sequences, it would be really interesting to see if this helps them. Because the sounds can really inspire different ways of moving. You almost feel like you're walking through a different atmosphere. It brings a lot of imagery to the movement as well. The first part of the process was mostly around the technology, developing software for the sensors themselves, developing the communication between the sensors and the computer, and all of that was custom software for this project. And then it went into a more creative phase, alongside with Nikos and his sounds, and in movements is how those two things mesh together. And if we're developing a performance, then we can be really specific and have each section really clearly mapped. And if we're giving it to school kids, then it needs to be much more general. So it's about balancing the, the fine tuning of those things. We're gonna try the sounds and the sensors with a set sequence, just to see how the two are gonna work together. It 
it's the case of playing with the different dynamic quality and the speed of the sequence and, and adapting it and developing it. The sensor on my arm created a lot of different sounds, but it was quite a different experience when I then placed the sensor around my middle. That made me concentrate on how my weight was shifting through the space. <laughs> Based on what kind of movement the sound encourages or what kind of sound the movement produces, we're also going to begin to set material in a structured improvisation. We're finding that we want the system to take the mover to a place of silence. So when the mover is not moving, there is this base point from which the mover or the teacher can begin. The next point is what I call home. If I were to put the sensor on my neck and I'm working with a particular sample, I know this sound will come up if I turn my head right and left. And that remains quite reliable and constant. And then beyond home is what you may call exploration. What other sounds are there in the sound sample I'm able to find if I start doing other movements with my head. It's clear to see that you forget what's there because you're seeing audiovisual performance and when you can rise above all the technology and just appreciate those moments of performance, then it's, it's really good. And also starting to think about handing over to someone who's never used it before and what controls they need to have available and how to make it as easy as possible to use. The pedagogical principle of the system is that it involves the mover searching for those sounds by experimenting with their speed or their orientation in the space or exploring a movement range that sits outside their habitual zone. I'm going to find something I didn't hear before by doing a new movement. And it's that kind of gratification the mover gets that makes the experience very rich. Thank <laughs> you.